Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we will be discussing on the mechanism of actions of general anesthetics. These are my references. Regarding viable theories, these include the unitary hypothesis, actions of GA agents on voltage-gated ion channels, two-pore domain potassium channels, and transmitter-gated ion channels. All GA agents exert their effects via a similar but not fully understood mechanism. GA agents exert minimal effect at voltage-gated ion channels. Two-pore domain potassium channels are found at pre- and postsynaptically throughout the nervous system. They are voltage-independent and are hyperpolarized by some anesthetic agents, especially the volatile halogenated hydrocarbons. Regarding transmitter-gated ion channels, they contain an ion-conducting channels whose function is altered by the allosteric effects of a number of compounds. Examples of ligand-gated membrane ion channels include the GABA, serotonin, acetylcholine, glutamate and glycine receptors. GABA-A receptor system is the major inhibitory neurotransmitter receptor system in the nervous system and accounts for around 30% of all inhibitory synapses. It consists of a pentameric arrangement of different subunits around the central ion channel pore. Volatile and intravenous induction agents, except for xenon and ketamine, enhances the ability of GABA to open the GABA-A receptor ion channels. Single amino acid substitutions within the receptor subunit have a marked influence on the anesthetic effect confirming the highly specific interaction of drug and receptor. For example, in respect of benzodiazepines, the alpha-1 subunit mediates sedation, while the alpha-2 subunit mediates enzyolysis. We move on to the glycine receptors, which are the GABA-A receptor analog in the spinal cord and the brainstem. They contain an integral chloride channel and are also affected by general anesthetic agents. Serotonin and neuronal nicotinic acetylcholine receptors are affected by GA agents. GA agents affect cationic currents through these receptors. However, the function of these central receptors are not fully understood. Lastly, glutamate receptors are the primary excitatory neurotransmitter system in the brain. They can be classified into NMDA and non-NMDA receptor classes. Inhibition of their function is consistent with the theory of general anesthesia, and ketamine, xenon, and nitrous oxide inhibits the NMDA receptor. The non-NMDA glutamate receptors are divided into various subclasses as well. These are strongly affected by ethyl alcohol, but not by volatile anesthetics. We move on to non-viable theories. The mayer overtone hypothesis proposes the potency of an anesthetic agent is related to its lipid solubility. The potency is measured by the MAC of an agent, while the lipid solubility is measured by the oil-gas solubility coefficient. The onset of narcosis was evident in experiments as soon as the particular substance had attained a certain molar concentration in the lipids of the cell. Lipid layers of the cell membrane represents the main site of action. The term membrane disruption is a hypothesis that the disruption of the lipid bilayer affected the function of membrane proteins, thus interrupting neuronal traffic. The counter-arguments for this hypothesis include rises in temperature disrupts lipid membranes without inducing a state of general anesthesia. Number two, Many compounds with high lipid solubility exert no anesthetic effect. This is the mayer overtone graph of potency versus lipid solubility. The x-axis is log 10 oil gas partition coefficient. The y-axis shows the log 10 MAC. Note that this is not a perfect relationship. Although isoflurane and enflurane have nearly identical oil gas partition coefficients, they have different MAC values. This relationship is not perfect. 
there remains a clear relationship between anesthetic potency and lipid solubility which any theory of action must accommodate. We move on to the clarate theory, which proposes that GA agents forms clarates or microcrystals which aggregates in cell membranes and affect their function. The counter-argument is that very high pressure is needed for clarate formation at body temperature. Lastly, pressure reversal theory, which proposes that anesthesia induced with halotane in tadpoles and mice could be reversed by subjecting them to pressure, and they assume that the pressure restored the normal configuration of cell membranes. However, the pressure required to reanimate these creatures were more than 50 atmospheres, thus volume expansion theory is also untenable. With regards to neurotoxicity and anesthetic agents, although some animal studies do show some evidence that anesthetic agents can cause neurotoxicity in animals, there is insufficient evidence in the human studies that shows that there is neurotoxicity associated. The conclusion is that there is insufficient evidence to attribute GA agents in causing neurotoxicity. However, to be safe, in the pediatric and elderly population, we should favor regional techniques when possible. Thank you.